Today we're going to be talking about succession planting and why it's something you should be doing in your vegetable garden. Now, some of you out there may be very familiar with succession planting and may already be doing that on a regular basis. Others of you out there, this may be a new concept for you. And so today I'm kind of going to describe our succession planting plan, kind of what we try to do. It's not always you know, ideal, our timing doesn't always work out just right, but kind of give you an idea of what we try to do to ensure we have continual harvest throughout this warm growing season. For a lot of the crops we grow in our vegetable garden, they have a specific kind of production window where they produce loads of harvest. And then as those plants get older, we start to see that production decline. A lot of times those plants can get, you know, ridden with diseases or have a lot of pest issues. And at that point, we want to get those plants out of the garden and plant some more somewhere else. That way we can have continual harvest and we can take advantage of this warm growing season. If we think about things like squash and beans and cucumbers, for example, those things produce really well, you know, after they get up and going. But at some point we'll start to see that production decline and they won't be making as many fruits. And at that point, it's really nice if we've got another plot or another row of squash, beans, or cucumbers that are ready to start producing so we can have that continual production. Other crops like corn are a one-time harvest. So we'll get that one harvest of corn, but if we want more corn throughout this warm season, we gotta plant more. And so we showed you in a previous video where we did a succession planting of corn, and we might plant some more corn in the next month or so and just keep planting throughout this warm growing season so we have corn all the way through. This bean plot here is a really good example where you'll see several different stages of production. So the first ones we planted in here were these momentum bush beans here and these royal burgundy beans here. Now we've been getting lots of good harvest off these guys, but they're starting to decline in production a little bit now. And that's just what happens with beans. Now, these pole beans here are kind of in their prime window now. These things are producing loads and loads of beans and probably will continue to do so. But these guys here are, you know, on the end of their production window. If we go over here, on this very end, we've got some of these golden wax beans. And these things are just now starting to produce. You can see they're loaded with flowers. Maybe you can see a little bean right there. So these things are coming along and we'll be picking these probably in the next week or so. And then we've got our half runner beans here, which I planted extremely thick, maybe too thick. And uh, these guys haven't started flowering yet, but they'll be coming along behind those yellow beans over there. So we've got several different stages here to ensure we have beans all throughout the season in which we can grow them. Another example would be these cucumbers here, these stonewall cucumbers, which are, you know, right in their prime production window right now. We're getting loads of cucumbers off these things. There's a few right there. I've been picking these every day and they just keep producing and keep producing. But at some point, probably in the next three or four weeks, we'll start to see a decline with these guys. And that's why we planted these right here, these max pack pickling cucumbers. So we planted these probably, uh, three weeks or so after we planted those slicers and these things are starting to produce now big loads of cucumbers and they'll be producing even when those slicers get done so we will lengthen our window for which we have cucumbers available in the garden and then we've got our squash here which are producing really well right now but i know at some point they're going to get eaten up by disease or maybe even squash bugs and they're going to slow down and if i want more squash i got to plant more squash so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to be succession planting some more squash we're going to plant maybe one or two of the same varieties we have here that we really like but we're also going to plant some new stuff just to have something different coming through in the garden before we do that succession plant let's take a little deeper dive into what varieties we have growing here and talk about 
what we liked about them so far and which ones we were really impressed with. Now I just picked these rascals late yesterday evening, not even 12 hours ago. But I got a feeling we're gonna find some we missed or some that have just grown since then. These things, you know, those fruits can blow up like crazy in a day or two. So we try to pick them every day. So we, uh, you know, don't let the fruits get too big and we're always gonna miss a couple. So picking them every day ensures we get them at their prime size. Let's start out right here. And this is a variety of zucchini called Spineless Supreme. And so the plants are spineless here. Uh, those are nice and smooth stems there. So they're not gonna sting you up like some other varieties will. The other nice thing about this zucchini here is it has this really open growing habit. And I really like that. You don't have to fight through a bunch of leaves to harvest it. The fruit's right there. You can see it. The flowers open up really nice. So the bees can get in there and do the pollination. And I've just really, really been happy with this Spineless Supreme zucchini variety. You know, production's been good, but that spineless stem there, making it easy to harvest, and also this really open growing habit has just been super, super nice. Now, another variety that's been a home run producer for us for a couple years now is this gold prize straight neck. And let's dig in here. We can see those puppies are loaded down in there. Those aren't quite big enough to harvest. Maybe by this afternoon, they'll be big enough to grab. So this is a straight neck variety and um, just a really good producer. We grew it last year. I grow it as a part of uh, you know, my squash plant every early spring. It's always a part of the first planting because these things just make and make and make. A really, really good hybrid straight neck squash variety. And then probably my favorite so far of all the varieties I've planted is this one here which is kind of the crook neck counterpart to that gold prize, and this is called Gold Star. So some of these are a little crook more than others, but it's a nice, smooth crook neck squash. And um, I have to say, this has been the most productive variety in this plot here. Not by a long shot. I mean, it just barely edges that gold prize straight neck, but this Gold Star is definitely a keeper. And I'm going to be planting me some more of these guys. I really, really like them. And man, they taste great. And lastly here, we've got our sunburst patty pan. We dig in here. We can see a few of those getting pretty close to being ready to harvest. And these were the first producers. These ones started producing earlier than any of the varieties. And man, they produce a ton. We go over here. I think we can find one. I seen just a minute ago that's probably past ready. So nice big old plants here. Tons of squash coming off these guys. Look right there, you can see three or four little squash coming along there. And where'd that guy go? There he is, on in there. I let that one maybe get a hair too big, but we'll get him out of there anyway. So this is a hybrid patty pan. These things have a nice texture to them. And like I said, they were the first to produce, but that also means probably they're gonna be the first to go out and first start declining in production. But we've got our money's worth out of them so far. And I always like to plant this one in early spring as well. So I can't complain about any of those varieties we planted early spring back in mid-March. All of them have done really, really well for me. But I wanna try some new stuff this time. And ideally, I would already have some more squash coming along. Ideally, I would plant another round of squash probably 40 days or so after I planted that first round. But, you know, things aren't always perfect. I had to wait for a spot to open up in the garden. You know, we like to practice good crop rotation around here. And I'm not going to pull up those and plant more squash right there. I'm not going to plant squash or any cucurbit there for another two years. So I had to wait on another spot to open up so that we can do our succession planting. And that spot is right here. So this is where we had some alliums planted in the fall and winter and on into early spring where we had some shallots and elephant garlic planted. And we've since pulled those, got those underneath the barn curing up. And uh, this is probably about a 20 foot wide piece right here. 
So I think I can squeeze three rows in there. And we've got some compost. We put down pretty heavily and incorporated it. And just to show you what it looks like, this is compost pre-incorporation. This is compost post-incorporation. Over here, we're gonna be putting some sweet potatoes in, maybe squeeze in one more row of cucumbers right there, but mostly sweet potatoes right there. And unlike some of my smaller plots in the dream garden, where I just plant one family per plot, this plot here is a good bit bigger. And so I can't, I could, but uh, it would be a little overkill if I just planted all one family in this plot right here. So we kind of cut it in half as far as our rotation goes and manage it that way. And you can do that too if you don't have a lot of subplots. You've got one big plot, just kind of cut it in half. I did grow some squash in here, in this portion of it last year, so I definitely don't want to plant them there but I haven't grown any squash or anything right here in a long time. And we got those cucumbers right there. So putting them right beside those, is gonna help us out with our rotation and kind of remembering what we've planted where. So as far as putting my drip irrigation down before I plant goes, I've got my mainline tubing here already in place because we've got other stuff being fed by that tubing there, just like this row of cucumbers here. And then we've got holes already punched in this mainline tubing from where we had those alliums planted. So I'm not gonna measure it off and lay out the stakes. I'm just kind of gonna go off where some of these existing holes in the mainline are. And let me show you an example here if I can find one. So like right here, see there's a little goof plug right there. So I'll probably just line up, put me a row right there and I can pull that goof plug out, put my row start in there and that'll be a row there. I'll skip over down here and uh, find me another goof plug. There's one right there, and there's one right there. So I'll probably put me another row right there. And then here, on that garlic, I had these row start valves in place, so I, I didn't want to fertilize them like I was doing some of this other stuff later in their life. So I'll probably put another one right there. So I'll just use those existing holes in the main line as kind of my guide here. So I'm gonna grab my double wheel hoe with the plow set and go ahead and make some furrows where these rows are gonna be. And then before we lay that drip tape, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna put some secret sauce down in those furrows before we bury our drip tape. And now for the secret sauce. So this is something I did a little bit back in the fall. I, I just kind of forgot about it, but it worked well. And dad's been doing it uh, on all his stuff he's planted this spring. It's worked really well for him. And this is our organic fertilizer. It's made with pelleted hen manure, which means it's got some calcium in there. And this stuff works great. Now it is organic, so it means it's a little slower than a synthetic fertilizer would be. But if you put it down pre-plant, once those plants get up and going, it'll then be available to them. And uh, man, they will pop. And the, the rate on this stuff is one and a half cups per 10 row feet or 10 square feet. And so we're just gonna sprinkle it lightly, you know, not real heavy, just kind of lightly like that there along these furrows here. We got three planting furrows. We're gonna sprinkle that lightly in there and uh, that's gonna do them plants well once they get up and going. All right, all right, all right. We got our drip in, got it installed, turned on. It's running there. We just wait for them little water spots to pop up every foot along that tape there to show us where to put our seeds. And uh, one thing about these row start valves here, these two that we didn't use, these things work just as good as a goof plug. You can leave them in there as long as you got that valve turned off. It'll plug up that main line. And you can just leave them there until you get ready to use them again, put a row there, or you can take them out and put a goof plug in them if you need to use those row starts elsewhere. So while we're waiting on them water spots to develop, let's take a look at what we're gonna be planting today. I got a whole 
bag of goodies right here. Let's start off on the first row. First row, we're gonna fill it with these round zucchinis. And if you've never grown these things, these things are a treat to grow. They're really fun to grow. The kids like to grow them. Really good to eat. You can slice them up, make zucchini bread out of them. I like to cut them in half, just throw them on the grill. Just, uh, you know, cook a half at the time. Real good to eat. Um, so we got, we've had this eight ball variety for a little while. Had it last year and we just added these two new ones here. The one ball, which is yellow, and then the Q ball, which is kind of a light green. So I'm gonna plant one third of the row of these, the other third of these, and the other third of these. And I'll have a nice little mixture there to enjoy. And uh, those also look nice in my little weekly vegetable bags as well. So we're gonna do one row with these three. And then the next row, I told y'all how much I like that gold star in the other plot, so I'm gonna plant half a row of those on the second row. And then the other half, this is another new one we just brought on called Slick Pick. And this is a kind of skinnier straight neck. It's supposed to be a really early and prolific producer, so I'm excited about trying this one. So we're gonna do on the second row, half these and half of the Slick Pick. And then on my third row, I'm gonna go all in on these zucchini right here. Uh, I grew that Spineless Supreme. I told you what I liked about it, a lot of good things about it. And this one here has really good disease resistance as well. Um, it's supposed to be a super, super home run producing zucchini. So I'm excited about trying this one here. So I'm gonna grow this Pascola in that second row. And I don't know if I'll need all both of these two packets, but I got plenty of seeds just in case I need them. Dad grew this one earlier this spring and uh, he said it you know, blew his mind how productive it was. So good idea to give it a try here. All right, we can see our little water spots popping up where the emitters are on that drip tape. We see one, two, three, and they're every foot along that tape there. And um, I like to plant my squash thick and come back and thin it. So I'm gonna put a seed by every emitter and I'll come back and thin it out to one every two feet or so. Now, in the past, let me get this opened up here. What I have done, and I have been prone to plant them too deep this way, is I have poked the seed right down where that water spot was. And sometimes they just end up getting too deep that way. I don't know if it's because it just kind of sinks in a little bit with all the water right there. <clears throat> so what I've been doing lately is planting them right beside that water spot instead of right on top of it. So I'll put my seed right there and I'm just lightly covered. And I'll come back and do this all with a rake, but I just want to show you how we do it here. So I'm going to put it right beside that water spot and lightly cover it up there. That way we don't plant it too deep. And we'll let this water run for a little while and it'll get plenty of moisture to that seed right there and should germinate pretty fast. All right, so that's all she wrote. Now those there should start producing squash probably middle to end of June. As it gets hotter and them heat units crank up, that will speed up that maturity date. So it's, you know, not out of the question to have squash producing, you know, 30, 35, 40 days after planting them this time of year. So that will ensure that we have squash on well into the summer. Now I may do one more succession planting in about three weeks, just to kind of toe the line there, push the limits on what I can do. Come mid-August, Sometimes late August, early September, just depends, you know, from year to year when it happens. That squash bug population will explode, and that's when we quit trying to grow squash or pretty much any cucurbit for that matter. So we'll just keep an eye on everything. We might plant one more round in another spot, but once we see that squash bug population explode, we're going to cut the cord on the squash growing. If you're doing any succession planning out there, let me know about it in the comments below. Let me know what schedule you're on, how often are you replanting, and what crops are you succession planting. We can always learn stuff from one another here, so I'd love to hear about how you do it. 
And if you're not succession planning out there, maybe you have a few more questions about our schedule or our you know, routine or strategy here, put those in the comments below and I'll be glad to answer them for you. I'll put some links below to all the varieties we planted today and our drip tape irrigation kit so you can go check those out. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And check out these other two videos right here. If you enjoyed this one, I think you'll really enjoy these two as well. We'll see you next time.